you, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. Because the task of this project was to write a social speech, a eulogy and accepted speech or a toast, and we missed our meeting last week because of the National Day of Mourning for George H.W. Bush, that it was only appropriate that I give a eulogy for the former president. Now, whether or not you agree with all or any of his politics, I think you can still appreciate the love he had and the sacrifices he made for this country, including nearly making the ultimate sacrifice when he was downed over the Pacific in World War II. And you can also appreciate the inarguably remarkable life that he lived. For a time, he was the youngest aviator in U.S. naval history. He was a collegiate baseball player, a congressman, ambassador of the United Nations, director of the CIA, vice president, president, a father to two governors and a president, and what he would have certainly said was most important, loving husband to one woman for 73 years. <clears throat> now the truth is that the story of George H. W. Bush almost ended before it had barely begun. On briefly after dawn on the morning of Saturday, September 2nd, 1944, Lieutenant Bush took off with two crewmates from the USS San Jacinto to attack a radio tower on Chichijima. As they approached the target, their plane was hit. Smoke filled the cockpit, flames rushed across the wings. My God, President Bush thought, Lieutenant Bush thought, this plane is going down. But he continued on to the target, dropped his bombs, and roared off to sea, telling his crewmates to bail out. Only after they had bailed out did he leave the controls and rush out of the cockpit. As he jumped out of the plane, the wind propelled him backwards and he gashed his head on the tail of the plane as he flew from the sky. He plunged deep into the ocean, bobbed to the surface eventually, and found himself on a tiny raft. His head bleeding, gasping for breath, and his eyes burning, the future U.S. president was completely alone. Sensing that his men had not made it, he was overcome with grief. He felt the weight of responsibility as a nearly physical burden, and he wept. Then, at just about four minutes shy of noon, a submarine emerged to rescue the down pilot. And this was not the end of the story. Now, they say you can tell a lot about a man from how he handles defeat and how he treats his opponents. I'm sure many of you have seen it by now, but I think it's worth rereading here the note that President Bush left for, in the Oval Office for President Clinton after he was defeated by him in the 1992 election. Dear Bill, when I walked in this office just now, I felt the same sense of wonder and respect that I felt four years ago. I know you'll feel that too. I wish you great happiness here. I never felt the loneliness some presidents have described. It'll be very tough times, maybe even more difficult by criticism you may not think is fair. I'm not a very good one to give advice, but just don't let the critics discourage you or push you off of course. You will be our president when you read this note. I wish you well. I wish your family well. Your success is now our country's success. I'm rooting hard for you. Good luck, George. Once political rivals, Presidents Bush and Clinton formed a very close bond after they both left office. They became partners in several charities and numerous times traveled across, across the country together to promote good causes. In early March of 2005, President Clinton was undergoing chest surgery um, around the same time that the younger George W. Bush was hosting the Gridiron Club dinner in Washington. George W. gave the audience a lighthearted update on President Clinton's procedure. He told the audience that as President Clinton awoke from his surgery, he was surrounded by his loved ones, Hillary, Chelsea, and my dad. <coughs> the, um, <laughs> it's, it's this loving devotion to his friends and family that uh, came to be a defining characteristic of President Bush, someone who dedicated his life to service as both a soldier and a statesman and will be remembered by family, friends, and even former political rivals as someone of genuine decency, sincerity, and love. Thank you.